My name is Lucy Ann, and I'm the front porch knitter. This is not my front porch. This is a new spot, though. Um, I'm here in what we could describe as our bonus room. It's really our family room. And uh, as I talked about in the last episode, I was planning to move everything over here, and I did over the holidays. However, this might be the only episode filmed from here because there might be a new plan. I don't know. We'll see when I get around to it, and I'll let you know. Welcome if you're returning. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoy my chaos. It's kind of fun. And if you're new, welcome as well. I'm glad you found us. And I hope you enjoy what we talk about today. Today's going to be a bit of a quicker episode because, as those of you who are returning know, I um, do a lot of stuff for the older members of my family. And one of the things I do is I take my dad's youngest sister to her place in Florida and help her open it up and get her organized for her to spend three or four months there. And then I go back and, and pick her up. Now we fly, we do all this by plane, but she's just not comfortable going in on her own. And that's fine. And um, it does involve a couple days in Quebec City at the beginning. And today's the day I leave, but I wanted to get this recorded because it has now been over like almost six weeks since the last episode went up. And when I get back from Florida, I'm only home for seven days before I go to an amazing knitters retreat. The New Brunswick Knitters are um, holding a little get together and um, I'm going down for it. I, I'm caught, right? I, yes, I live in Southwestern Ontario, which is where my family is and everything, but I spend six or seven weeks a year in New Brunswick, which is where my parents are. And I have to say that that's also where I really feel my community is, which is great. I mean, I have friends here and all those other things, but um, I do spend a lot of time in New Brunswick. And so I'm, I'm caught, I'm stuck in the middle, which is fine, but that's okay. So yeah, and I didn't wanna to have to wait till after I came back because I wanna film another episode after I get back because that's gonna have lots of stuff to talk about. It's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to it. There's some yarny goodness involved in that for sure. So this episode is not gonna be, um, you're not gonna see every single thing I've gotten and done and all those things in the last six weeks because that would be obscene and some of the things are already gone. So it's just kind of a quick overview to see what's happening and what's going on. I think the last time we chatted, I was heading to New Brunswick just before Christmas. And um, that was to go down and do my mom's baking. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen my mom's baking on Instagram, which reminds me, I am, um, you can find me on Instagram as the front porch knitter or my name, Lucy Ann Stoop. I come up both ways. Um, I have two profiles. The front porch knitter one is by far the most active. And I'm on Ravelry as L.A. Stoop. So my initials and my last name. And in theory, I'm on Facebook, but yeah, mostly I'm just a lurker. Don't do much there. And if you have questions or need to email me, it is thefrontporchknitter at gmail.com. And I will try to remember to put that in the details below. But yeah, happy to answer any questions. Love to chat. If anybody's in my neighborhood and wants to meet up and knit somewhere, I'm always happy to do that too. All the fun things. Good. So let's get started. What am I wearing? I am wearing my, I don't know, you're not going to be able to see this very well, but I'll just do this. My Traveler, which is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. I talk about it more in another episode when I finished it, um, which was just before the PEI Knitting Festival. And it's a drop shoulder textured hoodie and with the eye cord, which I did in a fun color. Um, I knit mine in Barocco Remix Light, and that makes it the perfect sweater to wear over a turtleneck to go to Quebec City and to throw on over a t-shirt in cool evenings in Florida, which is great. It's um, <clears throat> light, easy to wear, nice on the airplane, perfectly named The Traveler. I love it. 
So let's get into what I have finished. So I have, so this isn't really finished finished. This is like three quarters finished. I haven't felted it yet. One of my children, when they were home over Christmas, asked for a tea cozy. So I thought I'd show it here in this state. This is knitted but not felted. And this is just um, Patton's Classic Wool in... I can't remember the cover colorway and I'm not going to be able to remember it. It will have abandoned me, but I'm sure it's a discontinued color because I would have bought it on sale at the tent sale. So this is the cozy and when it's felted, it will be nice and dense and fit a teapot. And then I make a mat for the cozy, which when it's felted can sit on the counter so the counter doesn't leach the heat out of the teapot. And yeah, I... I will link the pattern I used down below. Okay, this is me being a terrible, terrible, terrible um, knitting podcaster. I'll link the pattern down below. But I only loosely, I use it for numbers mostly, not necessarily the pattern. But I do use, I do follow a pattern. So I'll link it down below. But I did get that done. And when I get back, I'll have to felt it. And then I'll show it to you again. I have to do another one. I had a second request. So there will be a couple of them. Uh, these were my advent socks, which I'm happy to say I did keep up with the stripes. And I did just do them the 24 stripes in the minis because I'll make another pair of socks with what's left over. So this was the Wool Baron Winter Solstice. Um, and you can see more about it on my Instagram and on my last episode. And to get, there were 21 stripes to get you to the solstice. So to do 24, there were three minis, a green, a red, and an orange. And that got you to Christmas Eve. So that's my sock. It's short, but not really short. I love these colors. She does such a great job. And surprisingly, when we opened the package, both my friend Heidi and I went, hmm, not sure about those minis, but they do really... Um, enhance the colors in the stripes which is perfect so that was one pair I'm so proud of myself that I kept up and then these were my naughty and nice from uh, timber yarns and they were not technically oh I still have a I still have one I still have a couple of ends to stitch in on this one. We'll just pull them tight so you don't notice. Um, they were not technically an advent set. They were just a striped sock set, which she did. Timber Yards does beautiful stripe, self-striping sock sets. So have a look at them. They come as 250 grams and there's tons of um, these ones. I just used the same yarn to do the heel. So I have the bullseye heel. It's a afterthought heel and these were naughty and nice colorway which was one of her Christmas colorways last year if you were watching I did um, she did a Grinch 24 stripes um, advent set and I did that I really like timber yarn and if you've noticed um, the grocery girls in their video highlighted their um, timber yarn hat and they're like a rag a work sock set and we might have I probably have one here somewhere oh <clears throat> this was not bought as a set but it is like I bought them as a skein and two minis but um, see the marling these sets timber yarns and there's a hat pattern and mittens I think that you should check out and this is big red and naturally I actually buy the big every time I place an order just about I buy a big red and a one of their green and one of their she has a licorice colorway minis because I like them for socks so that's cute that's not you know 
I probably had this the last time I recorded. I'm not sure if I did or not. And I may have shown it then, but the grocery girls have since featured them. So check those out. The other finished objects I have is a pair of socks for my dad, which um, I started when I was down there because I realized um, he was burning through his socks pretty quick because he wears them all the time, which he hadn't been prior to the last couple of years. So I sort of decided I was going to make him a pair or two every time I go down. This is a gorgeous color. This is just Patton's Croy. I picked it up at Michael's. It happened to be on sale that day. And the colorway on this one is Clover. Can see it should be able to um and again because i just wanted them for simple knitting i just knit the tube used up pretty much the whole um ball of yarn and then cut in a heel in just in black croy patent croy but i really love this colorway with the way it goes from greens to rusts here's the other one they aren't they don't match exactly but they're the same idea yeah so those are for my dad which he will get when I go east in a couple weeks three weeks I guess it is so I did those for him I haven't done anything for my mom although I do when we're doing works in progress I have something on the on for her I did make another pair of coastal drift mittens and I may have already said that but this is Holst Super Soft and Holst, hmm, see, told you, bag podcaster. They're alpaca blend, held double. And um, I just wanted a little dressier pair of mittens, like something not so, and you can never go wrong with black. And they're nice and light and they're warm. I love these coastal this coastal drift pattern. It's by uh, Manon Drolet of La Violette Knits. These make an amazing gift. Like they knit up so quickly. I have given several pairs away. So that's the mittens. And I also made. Oops, <laughs> that looks goofy. A little beret to go with it. It's just a very plain one. It was a free pattern. I'll link it below. Um, I did play a lit. So out of one ball of each, I got almost the whole thing with holding them double. But right here at the crown, just right here, and you can't really see it, but um, it's just the alpaca held single. And you know what? I'm going to know it's like that, but nobody else is. It's fun. And I love the way Holst Super Soft blocks. It is really, truly a black, black. There, that's a good representation of it. Yeah, so I did that for myself to have something a little bit dressier to wear when I'm out and about. These are the other socks I finished for Christmas and um, for my son and daughter-in-law and our grandson. The other thing I did, and, and I almost never crochet, but I did do um, a crochet pot holder. And this is Bev's Fold On Itself pot holder. If you watch um, Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady, she was making them for her sister. This one is very, very tight. I obviously hadn't crocheted for quite a while. And this is in um, just um, sugars and cream sugar and cream lily sugar and cream I have the second one on the go and it's a bit looser I am using a five millimeter hook because I don't crochet very much I don't have fancy nice hooks and this one's about I don't know two-thirds done and what happens is you just knit a or crochet a, around and around and then when it's done you'll know it's done when when you fold it like this there's no gap left 
So this one's almost done too. They're nice pot holders. Um, I have tons of dishcloth cotton and don't really need necessarily need more dishcloths. So that's one of my whips. So I'm working on that. So I guess we're into works in progress now. I have tons. I'm only going to show you some of the things that I've been actually working on. And I'm going to show you one thing that I haven't worked on a lot, but that I think because I saw other people share how far they were in it, I also want to share how far I am in it because that will make people feel better about the whole process. So you will recognize this. The needles are in it. Pull that through. It is, can you hear my telephone ringing? I'm just ignoring it. This is my um, Twist and Turns last year's Stephen West Make Along. And I am done this swing to this point. There's, and then I'm working on this one. I did, so this is a, you know, I still have to do this, finish off the, this wandering stitch section and the ribbing on this side. But I did spend about half an hour or 45 minutes um, last one day this week figuring out where I was at in it because that's the thing with a project like that you work on it you work on it you work on it and you know exactly where you are all the time and then you put it down and I think the thing for me with the that make along is it comes so close to Christmas that I get to a point where I go oh I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna do some Christmas knitting which is great but because they're such complex patterns if you stop midsection which I inevitably do um when you go back to it, you have to figure out what where you're at. And that takes a little bit of time. So now I know, I know where I'm at. I know what I still have to do. I'm feeling really comfortable with it. I know that I can leave it out and I will get it done. And so I really wanted to get it to that point. And um, so if yours is tucked away or you have another project like that, perhaps you still have shawlography, which is the year before that tucked away somewhere, not finished. Um, that's okay. Pull it out. Make a decision whether you want to finish it or not. I love this one. I love the colors. Um, it's nothing fancy. It's cascade yarn that I picked up, but the colors look so great together. It's one color changing and the beige and the green. And it's just going to, it's going to be so easy to wear. It works in spring or fall. It's going to be a great one to have just on the back of a chair. And I really want to have it done, but I just need to get to it. So pull it out, know that it's okay, figure out where you're at and set yourself some little goals. Maybe, I don't know. I'm not taking, obviously I'm not taking that with me on my trip. Um, that's another, that's a whole other kettle of fish trying to figure out what do you take when you go away for 10 days, um, two different destinations, lots of stuff to do, but you know, you need to bring knitting. I'll tell you what you bring, too freaking much. Just saying it out loud. I think that's all my finished objects that I have here. Some were gifted as Christmas gifts, but I think um, you might have seen most of them. If not, I'll pop in some pictures maybe of some of the socks and things that got finished just so you can um, see them finished I don't know do you care I have no idea we'll figure it out so let's look at some of my works in progress and these are things I'm taking with me so the first thing is oops there is a cookie wrapper because why not this is the yarn I did a sock swap that was organized by uh, La Mercerie, which is a yarn shop on Bainbridge Island. And my swap partner was in Alberta, Cheryl. Um, I'll post, I'll link her down below so you can follow her on Instagram. She has some cool stuff. I can't remember what her handle is. 
and the yarn, it, it came with a whole bunch of goodies and um, beautiful hand balms and all kinds of lovely things and um, a sock set. And this one is Fairy Dust is Like Love, That Yarn Habit. That's the cake, very messy cake. And the mini is Mushy Peas. And it looks like Mushy Peas. And again, I went, I'm not sure that really goes, but when you put it on, so far all that's on it is the little pop of color, two by two rib, and this um, pattern that, it's just one I do, and I haven't decided if I'm writing it up yet or not. Like I knit it fairly often, it's less vanilla than vanilla. So that's a sock I'm knitting. For me, I will take that with me because that's it's pretty mindless. It's 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 basically a ribbed sock, but with some other stuff going on, which makes it a little more interesting. I do almost I don't have right now because my dad's socks were the last pair of vanilla socks I had on the needles. I do normally have vanilla socks on the needles, but um, I have something else which is as good as vanilla socks, which I will show you now. It's for my mother. So if you're not knitting vanilla socks, this is probably the next best option. This is a muscle bar hat. And if you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen it and thought, oh, she's made really good progress on that. And then I ripped it back. I've only done about 10 rows since I ripped it back. It was probably 14 or 15 inches long when I decided it was too big. My mom has a very tiny head and I just looked at it and went, I know I, I don't know, I must have been tired when I did the gauge measurement because that's not, like, this makes no sense at all. But I really love this color. And now I'm back to the, just the round and round and round part. And this is, I don't know if you can see it, Leon Roxy spruce well you can tell how much i because it's all wound around the outside of the cake leo and roxy and the colorway is spruce um it's great i really love the way the colors play off each other just tonal but a little more than tonal which is really nice so yeah so that is also vanilla knitting which will just be you know round and round and round Oh, I didn't talk about the bag my socks were in. I should tell you that. Um, these are just in a random little pouchy thing off one of those sites where everything shifts from China and we're not supposed to do, and I know it, but it was cute. This one is from my favorite Two Sticks and You. Um, Brenda is currently doesn't have anything in her shop and her shop is closed down right now as she's undergoing cancer treatment. But I love her bags. Uh, I think this is the, this one's called, it's not the large zip pouch. I think it's just called the zipped pouch with the wristlet. But it's my little lumberjack gnomes. I really like that bag. I like all my bags from her. They're just a great size. So I'm working on that. And then I am working on, this is in a lovely Vichy cosmetic bag. Yes, you know, that's how we roll. It's at least it's not a grocery bag. Um, for my mom's sister, I'm working on, I'm knitting a sweater for her to give to her grandson because her cataracts are bothering her. And she found this yarn a little bit. We talked about it before. And actually, this is the replacement yarn because the other yarn was the wrong weight. So I'm knitting this for her grandson. It is a gorgeous all-over cable sweater knit in pieces it's a pretty um chocolate chippy kind of um pattern in that um i only occasionally like i need to refer to the pattern for increases and decreases and things like that but not for the the stitch pattern so that was the back and this is the front i started on saturday my goal is now I have a goal to have this done before I go east because that's where she lives and shipping it would cost a fortune. 
and it is going pretty quick. It is a very old paper pattern, which just so you know, I, uh, because I don't often work from paper, and I do have the paper in here, but I'm actually working, the, my notes and everything are on my iPad. I just took pictures of the pattern, converted it to a PDF, which is easy to do. I, I think my iPad just does it automatically. And um, then I, uh, what is the word I want? Oh my goodness. Saved it in books. I saved it in my in the books app. And then I can mark on it and, you know, make a note of where I am, do, ha do um, little tick marks, whatever I need to do to keep up with the pattern. Um, I don't even know if you could find this pattern anywhere today. Like, I, I don't know. But it is a very nice, it doesn't even have a name. Sweet Briar maybe is the name of it. I'm not sure that's the yarn, but it is a very nice sweater. And I am enjoying knitting it. And um, last time she had picked up a yarn, but it was too heavy. Like I was never, like my aunt is an old fashioned knitter and you know, it said she needed eight skeins. So she bought eight skeins, but the trouble was she bought eight skeins of Chunky and it really needed eight skeins of Worsted or Aran. And so I went out and because it's Barocco Vintage, and Barocco Vintage is so easy, I was able to get the same color, pretty much. This is a little more heathered than the one she had, which I actually like better, this one. Um, but I was able, you can see it's a little heathered. Um, I don't know if it has a color name on it or not. Let's see. No, it's a number, 51191. Just pretty amazing color that is. Uh, this is really nice for case 12. It's 52% acrylic, 40 wool, and 8 nylon. And um, his mother will appreciate that. And when he's, we're knitting it in size such that he can probably wear it right through high school and maybe even into university. We're doing a men's small. And he will appreciate it when he's doing his own laundry. <laughs> and if some girlfriend throws it in the dryer, it'll be okay. So... It is very soft, it's very nice. And I, I enjoy cables. My problem is I also like to knit and read and you can't knit and read cables even when you have the pattern memorized. Um, so I can knit and watch television but I can't knit and read. I can knit and listen to an audiobook. That is going with me. I, I skeined up more yarn last night to make sure I had enough. Because um, I can do about, if, I, if it's all I'm knitting on in a day, I can do about a ball in a day. Like, it isn't going to take me very long. I just need to sit down and do it. And, um, yeah, I have so many other things I want to knit that I get a little selfish sometimes and don't want to knit on things I'm doing for other people by request. But that's okay. This is not going with me on the trip. This is the Saturday Shrug, and I don't know who it's by, but I'll post, I'll put it down below. And um, Amanda Clark, sweet skein of mine, she posts pictures of hers all the time. And so, I, and I love the way she styles it and the way it looks. It's getting pretty close to done. I think I need about another three inches, four inches. It's just one by one rib. I think it's a free pattern, but I'll link it down below. This is what I knit last night, watching curling, so it goes pretty quick. It is on, here's, this is the classic. It is on whatever the recommended needle size was in the pattern, looks like this. And it is on my most awful, you know, cord. Susan Bates, I have tons of these because people always give them to me, but I can't use it. <laughs> can't use them for anything that's um I don't know anything's too fiddly because by the time I'm done I get so frustrated with the cord I just want to throw it but it's perfect for something like this which is just a big tube and it is knit in a unidentified white mohair that I got 
in a day stash from someone local to me. I'm not sure if there's even any mohair in it. No labels. And this beauty, which is 100% acrylic. I know, it's in my stash. Um, Prism from Mary Maxim. And the colorway is Mirage. If I had not been trying to get rid of things out of my stash, I would have bought, you know, I can imagine what I would have bought for this. But actually, I'm really liking the way this is knitting up. And um, I'm not, it's not going to be too precious. I'm going to be able to just wear it and not have to worry about it. And yeah, I'll finish that when I get home. I'm almost to the end. I'm, I'm not taking it because it also has an Italian, it had an Italian bind off or cast on and an Italian sewn bind off. And that would be faffy to take with me. It is also in a two sticks in you bag that I got just before her shop closed. I love this one, they're so cute, these little animals. This one is a little bit smaller. I'm not sure. How's that for a description? It's a little bit smaller than the other one. But perfect. And I think that's all I'm actively working on right now. Oh, I do have, oh, it's over there. I'm not gonna grab it. I have been working a little bit on Thomas's um, sweater, but I'm, I'm rethinking it a little bit. So I've sort of put it on hold till I have time to process what I'm gonna do with it. It's supposed to be knit flat in pieces, but I don't look forward to doing color work that way. So I'm thinking I'm going to, I've got it almost to the underarms because it's bottom up on both sides. And I think what I'm gonna do is then put it into the round and do the color work in the round and steep the armholes. Have I ever steeped anything before? No, but I've watched other people do it. I'm pretty sure I can figure it out. She says with confidence. And it's Briggs and Little. So, you know, the most forgiving yarn in the world for steeking probably. So it'll be fine, no matter what I choose to do. So some acquisitions and then I got to get going because I have to be on the road in like half an hour to get to the airport, but that's fine. I did do some shopping. So I picked up the yarn for that cable sweater. And of course I was at Little Red Mitten and like, who would I be if I just went in and bought one thing and left? And the girls were in their Santa costumes that day. So it was kind of fun. It was before Christmas. So I also got... I think I got three of these beauties. Look at that. Can you see all that bling? These are 25 grams. The colorway is Galactica. 100% glitter, 76% glitter yarn, 24% paillette, whatever that is. I don't even know what that is. It's um, King Cole Cosmo. There are, let me how many yards? 393 meters in each ball. So I have roughly 1,200 meters of it, which should be lots to do. Um, some kind of a blingy sweater for me. And I have a couple of options of what I think I wanna hold it with. I'm thinking red fingering, red mohair, and this. Maybe for the cruise. Sure, that'll be fun. Stay tuned. We'll talk about it more here, I'm sure. And I always go, they always have sales bins on the table. And I was looking for, a few episodes ago, I wore my pink Lou vest, which I really love. And I have a jewel button on it. And it really needs two. And so I just thought, oh, I'll just see if they have another one similar to the one I have and I'll buy it. Well, they had these two that match in the bargain table, the sale table. So they were, I don't know, pretty inexpensive. Wait, like I, I know what they're, I know what they cost retail, and I'm pretty sure this might have been less than wholesale, but that's fine. And these are buttons that just, I don't know if you can see. Let me pull on it. They screw on. And um, so yeah, I'll take the one that's on my vest off and put these two on it. 
So there's a screw on the back, just a little flathead screw, and a washer so it doesn't pull through the knitting. It's just pl hard plastic. Sometimes they're leather, it might be leather. I'm not sure, I think it's hard plastic. And you pop it on. And so then you can remove them to wash it, which is great. And you can also move them from one garment to another pretty easily. And so I got two of those, which I really like. And because they were on such a smoking deal, um, last time I showed you the brick bubble pin I got, or shawl clip thing I got at La Violette when they were closing. Well, this is similar. This is a jewel one. It's just a big leather disc and you can screw it on. And then whether you, um, and it has the second disc on the back to keep it from going through. And whether you hold the whole shawl in place that way or treat this like a button or whatever you might do, I thought that was a nice thing to have as an addition. I really like those. And before Christmas, so when I talked to you last, I was headed to Brunswick and my friend Heidi and I, who I'm going on the cruise with and who I will, the Grocery Girls Alaskan Cruise, and who I am also going to see at the Knitters Retreat. We're going to room together with another friend of ours, Robin. And um, we got together because I had dropped off my Christmas gift to her when I was down there and had driven because I knew... Um, I knew I wasn't going to have time to, um, I didn't want to have to mail it. So I dropped it off when I was down earlier in the fall and she, we got together for lunch when I was down there in December and she gave me my Christmas gift. And it's not all here because there was also other yummy things in it and some other goodies, but she made me this gorgeous bag with Santa and it is, it stands up really nicely. It is, oh, it's in here, the remnants of, oh, my father's sock project, but it's got this really nice jingle bells. It's all different Christmas words. My favorite things, have a holly jolly Christmas, little Christmas snowflakes, a merry little Christmas wonderland, jingle bells, jingle all the way, yeah, all kinds of Christmassy sayings. So that beautiful bag. This gorgeous sock set from Ancient Yarns. This is the um, Lanso Meadow in Newfoundland colorway. It's their one of their um, Year of the Gnome sets of minis. Just gorgeous. And as a knitter, I love when someone else knits for me. And she did me these gorgeous mittens. And they're so soft. I think pretty sure an alpaca blend. And she did the curled little curl and the ribbed cuff, the cabled cuff. Look at that. And they're so cozy. Now I can wear them. I haven't shown them to you guys, so I hadn't worn them yet. But they're gonna go with me on this trip because you know I have to go to I have to go to Quebec City before I go to Florida. So that's what I got. So the one piece of unfinished business we have from the last episode is we were doing a draw for this book, which is one of my favorites. And I, all you had to do to enter was um, comment. And I used a random comment picker. And I did it. I remembered. Like, th these are all amazing things. You guys should be up amazed and astounded that I remembered. And I did it. And um, I, this is the winner. Donna Welch. So, Donna, if you can contact me, my email is thefromporchknitter at gmail.com. And all I need is your mailing address. And I will get that off to you after I'm back. Sometime between when I get back and when I leave again. Hopefully if you get back to me. And um, congratulations. I'm pretty excited. I'm glad to give that away. Um, 
it's a book I think is really worthwhile and I just bought it on Amazon like if anybody else wants to just go buy it for themselves there's a few others in the series I do think they are handy references I ha I have them on my wish list and haven't purchased the other ones yet just because I don't know I really don't know why I haven't purchased them yet but I do really like this um, cast on and bind off one because it's really well illustrated and it's um, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do quite a variety of cast-ons and cast-offs. And you know what? Sometimes, I know there's YouTube videos, but sometimes if I just read through it, that's better for me. So, you know, we all do what we need to do. That's what is great about our knitting. It's ours to do with as we wish. So... I'm going to sign off. I have to finish packing my yarn. Everything else is in my suitcase. And um, I am looking forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks for hanging out this long. And, you know, do all the things like subscribe. Send me a message. Comment. Ask me a question. Anything at all. It's all good. Take care, everyone. Enjoy this uh, chilly weather. And if it's hot where you are, and stay out of the heat. And enjoy your knitting do what brings you joy. Bye.